Hey there, welcome to LSAT Demon Daily. I'm Eric, and that's Reggie, a LSAT Demon student who just demolished the LSAT and is here to share his success story. Reggie, first off, congrats. Uh, Thank you. Let's not bury the headline. Tell me what just happened. Yeah, so uh, I just got my score back recently, and to my surprise, got a 180. A 180. Yeah. Now, did you know when you took the test that you just totally crushed it and you were no. like, oh yeah no Not you didn't have that feeling no there was even a game there was a game there was a reading comp section that i was like shit like i don't know if i <laughs> did my best here um i actually was like you know you go through ebbs and flows of kind of what your score might be or what you think your score might be um at one point i was like i probably got like a 169 <laughs> so okay. yeah Questioning whether you should cancel your score. Or... Right. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. let that be, I think, an important lesson to anyone who in the future is didn't really think they did all that well and is wondering whether they should cancel or anything like that. Just wait until you see what the score is because mm -hmm. we don't always know. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, maybe we'll get into that in a little bit. Why don't we take a step backwards, start at the beginning. Brief overview of how you got started like, or where you got started with the LSAT. Do you remember mm -hmm. an, a diagnostic that you took at the beginning? So I don't remember like my very, very first diagnostic um, because I actually started studying or looking into LSAT in high school. Um, I like just really liked standardized tests. So I was kind of exploring um, and I law school was always an option for me. And so I looked into it pretty early. Um but the last diagnostic I could find um, was like on Khan Academy or something. I, it was a 159. Um, okay. That's the oldest test I could find. Um, yeah. Cool. So 159. And then, so that was a while ago. Yeah, that was in well, uh, 2020, maybe. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, is that when you started studying? Has it just been a continuous period of mm -hmm. studying since then? No, so uh, that was a long time ago now, like three years. <laughs> I have not been studying that whole time. Um, I was really interested in it um, and like focused on it for a while uh, after graduation and like COVID hit. And so I was kind of using that time to study. Um, but then it was like on and off again. Uh, I wasn't really sure if I wanted to go to law school. Um, so I started using uh, Seven Sage because it was recommended to me from a friend. And um, at first, I really liked the idea of their syllabus and things like that. And like kind of um, taking the LSAT one step at a time and learning the fundamentals. I used it. I got burnt out with it and it just didn't really work for me. I was kind of plateauing in the 160s. Um, and I actually burned out so much that I stopped studying completely. Um, and then... I picked it up maybe about in August this year, uh, and I was listening to the uh, Thinking LSAT podcast and the Demon Daily podcast, um, just kind of randomly. I don't even know how I discovered it. Um, and I was listening and was like, I don't know if I believe what they're saying. Like, this kind of seems too good to be true. What, and I didn't what even... do you remember sounding too good to be true? Well... Like, OK, the I remember that the idea of just like not reading the questions first seemed ridiculous to me. The idea of like turning off your clock and not worrying about the time at all was like, what? Like, I'm not going to do that. Like, that, is, that just doesn't make any sense. Um, and I was like wary for some reason to even try the free like uh like, like version of LSAT demon. Uh, but I eventually did. And I was like, this is amazing. I, I love this. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So was, I've been, yeah. Yeah. What was it that you found appealing? What was it that you loved mm -hmm. about the LSAT demon way of approaching the test? Yeah. To me, it's just really intuitive. Um, it's not complicated at all. Like it is taking the test for what it actually is. Um, which is a test of understanding and comprehension. It's not about like a logic language or formula or um, complicated ways of like looking at the types of games or the types of questions. Um, it really took each 
are you, you with drilling, you can take each question, no matter what type of question it is, and just sit with it and understand that question. And even though that's only one question, it applies to a ton of other types um, of questions that you might come across. And I really liked that. Um, and it pushed me into the 170s. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was going to ask, you had mentioned feeling burnt out, feeling like you had plateaued in the 160s. Mm -hmm. What was it that got you out of that? Maybe those are different things. Mm -hmm. or, did, or did you find that overcoming a feeling of burnout went mm -hmm. along? It went hand in hand with getting your score up or was that sure kind of different process? I think they were different. Um, for burnout, it was the fact that I didn't even feel like I was going to complete the Seven Sage course because they there's so much. I think there's a new version out now or something, but there was so much content. Um, and with the time at that point, I had a timeline and I was like, I kind of want to finish by this date. And I was like, this is going to take forever. And I couldn't even do with the goal that I had set. I couldn't really keep up with the day to day um, uh, schedule. Yeah. And it was really boring. <laughs> I was like, I don't this isn't fun. I don't enjoy this. And so I was like, well, maybe like not that law school wasn't for me, but it's like I'm not right now. Um, and then I picked it up, I think, really just by hearing that going to law school for free was possible uh, on the podcast and kind of like buying into that. Um, and then to break the 160 plateau, I think genuinely it was the classes um, that got me there, like doing the live classes. Um, I know that some of the ones that I took were like all his reading class. I believe I took your reading class. Um, and also, uh, worlds and like circle slash those things really helped me perfect my games, which was a huge, um, bump. And I'm trying to think if there was anything else specifically. Um, yeah, yeah I, I wonder just like tips. Like yeah. That. I wonder if you, if you think of yourself, mm -hmm. you know, on, on test day when you got a 180 and just how it was that you were thinking about and approaching the test mm -hmm. compared to you when you were in the 160s mm -hmm. is there something that comes to mind that differentiates those two test takers yeah um i think the first test taker is someone who was like scared of the test who was a little bit um felt like not necessarily defeated, but knew that the test was made to trick you, but not really realizing um, exactly how to call the test out on its bullshit, if that makes sense. And I'm uh -huh. like, yeah. Uh, and I kind of approached the, the questions with hope <laughs> and you shouldn't do that. Um, yeah. I think when I took it um, this time, it was really a... Um, like I walked in with like some bravado with some confidence and I was like, this is, this test is easy. It's understandable. It's learnable. Um, and really being critical of the questions on LR or not the questions of the, um, the passages in LR mm -hmm. and then also the answer choices, um, and really not being afraid to, uh, just completely disregard answer choices that didn't make any sense. Um, and with RC, uh, I think in the past I was also scared of the passages. And so you kind of just rush through them, um, which is the opposite of what you should do. Um, and I went into it with like an interest, trying to feign an interest in whatever they were talking about, uh, but also being critical and engaging uh, with the passage itself before moving to the questions. Uh, I also think I was just a lot more relaxed because I was turned off the clock and time as as much as I wanted it to be it was a little bit of a factor just a tiny bit but I was able to kind of put that aside uh and it didn't give me as much anxiety as it tended to um earlier yeah and I love that you acknowledge that even on your best day that awareness of the clock is still there. it's still there a little yeah. bit of course <laughs> it is it was for me as well when I yeah was you know and probably still to this day is um, mm -hmm. when I'm teaching classes and literally there's no clock. I'm still mm -hmm. a little bit of me is thinking, oh, students are judging me for how long it's <laughs> taking me to explain this question. So mm -hmm. it's always there. But 
yeah, there's no such thing as perfection. And mm-hmm. um, you acknowledge it and then say, okay, but still, I'm good at this test. And mm-hmm. I've got that little bit of bravado, like mm-hmm. you said. So that's great. Yeah. Do you have a favorite section? I really like games and I'm so sad that they're leaving. Um, Me too. Yeah, the games was so much fun. Like even with the prospect of uh, teaching LSAT in the future, like I was like, I really hope I get to teach games at some point. But yeah, uh, other than that, LR, I think, because I, I think that was the one I was always naturally good at. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you mentioned teaching. You were a part of the Ask Button team, right? Yeah, um, I was lucky enough to do that. Mm-hmm. Tell me a little bit about that. Mm-hmm. You were doing that while you were studying, right? Yeah. So. Um, it wasn't something that I even knew was a possibility, but then I scored my first 170 or above on a practice test. Uh, and I got a little message and I was like, oh, this is cool. What is this? Uh, and it was basically an opportunity to join the Ask Button Heroes, which um, allows you to answer Ask Button questions from other students, uh, which I thought was really cool. Um, and I definitely jumped on the opportunity to, to do that. And being able to teach questions pushed me from like maybe scoring a 170 or 171 um, to high 170s, uh, Mm. like not instantly, but it really helps you understand the question even more than you would from uh, the perspective of a test taker. Mm -hmm. And I think that makes sense Um, when you have to teach a concept. It it's like a. I think a known study strategy is like teach a concept to someone who doesn't know anything about it. And hopefully that will help uh, you learn more about it. But in this case, we have students who at least know something about the LSAT. So it's a little bit like, I think, easier. (laughs) Um, But yeah, so being able to kind of transfer the skills that you know, because you know that you can do well in the test and explain that to someone else, um, no matter what question they have is... I don't know. It was really helpful for me. Oh, absolutely. Teaching mm-hmm. is a great way at getting better at something, a, mm-hmm. a great way to learn. I, yeah. I'm sure I'm better at the LSAT now than I was when I took the test just because mm-hmm. I've had a couple of years of teaching. Yeah. Thinking back on your time as an Ask Button Hero, any really big topics that you would see come up from time to time? Were there any common... Mm -hmm. issues or errors that you sort of noticed Mm -hmm. coming up in the questions that you would get um any big themes Mm -hmm. um yeah i guess that's a long-winded way of of asking any big advice that you Mm -hmm. found yourself giving time and again that maybe listeners of this pod would want to know yeah um to be honest i can't think of any at the moment It, it seemed like to me every question was really unique. Like they did, I'm sure spoke to a larger concept of um, whatever section they were asking about, but I can't connect any of those dots (laughs) right now. I, they, it always seems like um, I was going in and really like surgically analyzing that specific question. Um, Sometimes it would take me like 20, 30 minutes just to write out an explanation for a fairly simple question because I really, I'm, that's kind of how I am. I'm pretty, um, I don't know. I'm not a perfectionist, but when I'm explaining something, I tend to over explain. Sure. Um, just cause I really want someone to understand, but I, yeah, I can't make any of those connections overall. I do have like general tips, uh, things that yeah. I got from the demon, but Absolutely. I don't think that they were specifically from ask button. Yeah. Yeah. So what are some of the, bi- maybe imagining, Mm-hmm. Um, someone listening to this podcast who is mm-hmm. in the middle of their own LSAT mm-hmm. journey. Mm-hmm. What is? Are there a couple biggest lessons or biggest yeah. pieces of advice that you would give to someone? Yeah, um, my biggest pieces of advice usually um, is don't an- or look at the question at all, uh, no matter what section you're on, before engaging with the prompt. Um, as crazy as that sounds <laughs> and tr- treat the prompt as if it's RC at the very least, treat it like it's your best friend and that the questions and the answer choices are your worst enemy. And you really want to engage as much as you can um, with the passages and read them for understanding sentence by sentence, line by line. Um, 
and really be critical. That's where the that's really where the test sits. It's not in answering the questions. I feel it's really with engage engaging and um, uh, comprehending the the passages. Um, that's my biggest tip. Um, other one, of course, is turn off the clock. Don't worry about time. If you are working on familiar familiarizing yourself with each question um, and just like kind of how to take the test uh, through drilling, which is untimed and you get to spend as much time as you want on any one question, uh, you can kind of apply that to taking the exam. I kind of look at the exam as one question at a time and not really thinking about how many questions or passages are left. Um, and you tend to get faster that way. So, you know, like the founders say, slow down to speed up. It's really true. I, yeah, I think if you were to give, if I was to give a couple pieces of advice, it'd be the same thing. Mm -hmm. So well said. I'm interested by your saying that you, enjoy standardized tests mm -hmm. i certainly enjoy the lsat um i maybe have either less memory or less experience with other standardized tests but probably that statement strikes some people as <laughs> odd yeah yeah what do you like about standardized tests sure. and what what about the lsat is different or mm -hmm. or is it like how, how do you see the lsat within yeah. the larger cosmos of testing yeah, um, this is pretty vain, I think. But the reason that I like standardized tests is I like comparing myself to other people. <laughs> I'm big sure. on competition. Like, I'm very competitive. Yeah. And so whether it's with myself or others, but um, whenever, like, even in elementary school, you just kind of, like, take those na nationwide exams or whatever, and they're just trying to see where you're at. Where they're and, like, it's not about you. It's about testing the school. Right, and you're like, yeah, right. bullshit. I've taken, right. I know what tests are. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and like, it doesn't matter what those, like what you get. But I was always really happy when I was like in the top like 90% or usually this is a, a flex, but usually like, and these are like fourth grade, so it doesn't matter, <laughs> but I would get like 99th percentile in reading or whatever. Uh, and same with SAT. I actually didn't do stellar on my SATs like I did well but I didn't do as well as I expected um but the prospect of kind of having a name to or not a name a number to go by you mm. always felt uh good to me it sounds really elitist and like fucked up a little bit <laughs> but that it's just like a, a personal thing um but sure. the LSAT is different I think from a lot of other standardized tests because it's not about um it's not really a knowledge test, if that makes sense. Um, it's not something that, of course, you can study for, but it's not something that you can memorize. Uh, it's more of a skills test, if that makes sense. You have to kind of learn the LSAT. You can be good at um, reading comprehension and do really well at the LSAT, but I think you actually have to learn the LSAT as a test itself, as like the material. Um, and that makes it really different. Yeah, I like to think of it as training more mm -hmm. than studying. Yeah, because you're right; it is a skills test, and it's mm -hmm. thankfully one that, whereas the stuff on the SAT you might not use throughout the rest of your life, mm -hmm. being able to read well, you definitely will. Yep. So mm -hmm. I encourage students to take solace in that. If it feels like a grind and it feels like it's really difficult to make progress. It's because mm -hmm. you're actually building a lifelong skill. So yeah. That's great. Yeah. Cool. So what's next for you? You mentioned yeah. it sounds like law school's maybe up in the air. You're not applying this mm -hmm. cycle, but mm -hmm. yeah, what what's going on uh, in your future application cycle? Yeah. So I uh, currently work at a public defender agency. Uh, so I'm planning on keeping that job um, and trying to actually actually actively talk to um, attorneys and learn more about different uh, fields of law. Uh, like you said, I don't plan on applying this cycle. I'm going to wait um, until uh, next cycle at the very least. It might be longer than that. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm going to do my research into different schools, put my personal um, statements together, um, kind of take my time with it, though. Um, and 
Let's see what else. I, I mean, I want to work with the demon and maybe get some tutoring in there. Um, I have this dream actually of moving into a van and <laughs> working remotely as a demon teacher. Um, Being an itinerant yeah. LSAT instructor. Yeah. That's so funny. who knows? Maybe that'll happen. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Mm-hmm. Well, Reggie, thanks so much for coming on. It's been been a pleasure. Congratulations and well Thank done you. once again on your 180. Um, and Thank you on behalf of all the other LSAT demon students who you helped out uh, with your work as an ask button hero. Um, I know it helped you Mm -hmm. to get a little bit better at the test, but I'm sure it also helped a lot of LSAT students along the way. So thanks for that. Yeah, thank you. All right. Well, email daily at lsatdemon.com if you'd like to ask us a question or share some LSAT or law school admissions news. Thanks for listening. (laughs) 